welcome into the celebration of Eucharist on the fifth Sunday of the Easter season. As we move towards our, our Eucharist, let's hold in our prayer those who've died recently and those whose anniversary of death is at this time. And also it's being Mother's Day weekend, let's include in that prayer our mothers who've gone before us into the fulfilment of life in the Kingdom of Heaven. That's the spirit in which we always gather for Eucharist, isn't it? Uh, praising our God, which we do in a special way during the Easter season. For Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. And of course, here we are gathering on the weekend of Mother's Day and aren't our mothers and our families a significant part of our prayer this weekend? All of that and much more we include as we gather as people of faith and hope. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. When we get to the responsorial psalm today, we'll be saying, Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Let's do that as we move further into our Eucharist. Creator God, you renew us in your life again and again. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the way, the truth and the life. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you guide us in the way of Jesus Christ the Lord. Lord, have mercy. As we hear today, God has promised always to have mercy on us, to forgive us as we call for that, and then to lead us to life everlasting. Amen. Let's continue our Easter hymn of praise. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, 
Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Easter mystery within us so that we, you were pleased to make new in the sacrament of baptism, renewed for us at Easter, may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come, finally, to the joys of eternal life. We ask this through our risen Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. About this time, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenists made a complaint against the Hebrews. In the daily distribution of their own widows, we were, who were being overlooked, so the twelve called a full meeting of the disciples and addressed them. It would not be right for us to neglect the word of the God. So as to give out food, you brothers must select from among yourselves seven men of good reputation. Filled with the spirit and with wisdom, we will hand over this duty to them and continue to devote ourselves to prayer and to the service of the word. The whole assembly approved of this proposal and elected Stephen, a man of full faith and of Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert of, to Judaism. They presented these to the apostles, who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of the Lord continued to spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem were greatly increasing, and a large group of these priests made their submission to the faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Responsorial Psalm. Lord, let, Lord, your, let your mercy be on, be on us as, as we place our trust in you. Ring out, out your joy to the Lord, O just, for praises fitting, fitting for loyal hearts. Loyal hearts. Give, Give thanks, thanks to the Lord upon, upon the harp. With a ten string lute, lute, sing him songs. songs. For the for word the of the Lord, Lord is faithful, and all his works to be trusted. trusted. The Lord, Lord loves justice and right. And and fills the earth with his love. The Lord, the Lord looks on those who revere him, him on those who hope in his love, to rescue, to rescue their souls from death, to keep, to keep them alive in famine. Lord, Lord let, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. The Lord is a living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him. Set yourselves close to him, so that you too, the holy priesthood that offers the spiritual sacrifices which Jesus Christ has made acceptable to sacrifices which Jesus has done, may be living stones making a spiritual house. As scripture says, see, I, see how I lay in Zion, a precious cornerstone that I have chosen, and the man who rests trust on it will not be disappointed. That means that for you who are believers it is precious, but for unbelievers the stone rejected by the builders has proved to be the keystone, a stone to stumble over, a rock to bring men down. They stumble over it because they do not believe in the word. It was fate in the store of them. But you are chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a people set apart to sing the praises of God, who call you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand to welcome the gospel.
way, the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you so. I'm going now to prepare a place for you And after I've gone and prepared a place for you, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas spoke up and said, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you know me, you know my Father too. From this moment you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, just let us see the Father and then we shall be satisfied. Have I been with you all this time, Philip, said Jesus to him, and you still do not know me? To have seen me is to have seen the Father. So how can you say, let us see the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you I do not speak as from myself. It is the Father living in me who is doing this work. You must believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Believe it on the evidence of this work, if for no other reason. I tell you most solemnly, whoever believes in me will perform the same works as I do myself. You will perform even greater works because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. I remember a situation where someone asked a mother of uh, four children, which is your favourite? And the mother answered wisely and truthfully, they're all special in their own way, I love them all. Ah yes, the expanse of love of a mother, and yes, blessings to you all this weekend, all mothers. Blessings this week to all families. Sometimes there's criticism about the way we might try to overdo Mother's Day. Uh, It's still very important, I think, to pause and say, yes, Mum, yeah, amongst everything else that's going on in our family, you are so special. And we hold you, mothers, in our prayer for God's continued blessings this weekend. There's something of that conversation I referred to, which is your favourite, in this Gospel reading, did you hear? There are many rooms in my Father's house, says Jesus. Yeah, there's a place, there's space for every one of us in the house of the Lord. Whatever we think of ourselves, whatever other people might think of us, however history might judge us, There's a space for us, there's place for us in the house of the Lord. That's in the love of God for us now and it's in the eternity life of God through our death and when we're raised into that. Every one of us, or every one of them special, I love them all. 
It might be what a mother says, and we hear that it's what God says. Although we can't sum up God altogether, there are signs and premonitions and experiences of God here amongst us, in us. There's part of our tradition through the Old Testament and the New Testament and through the story of our church where the feminine is ascribed to God, though mostly we hear about the masculine face of God, don't we? And neither of them and both together, of course, sum up God. God is more than all of our categories. But it's an opportunity to remember that our writers here talk about the feminine in God. An obvious one of that is uh, Jesus' parable. Do you remember? He said, uh, just consider a woman who is searching for a lost coin. That's how God is. So although a lot of our stories are male, yeah, there's room in there for us to recognise that God is part of all of our lives and every one of our lives can show up something of the life of God. Philip seems in that gospel to have an image of God as being out of this world, even away from this world, did you hear? Just show us the Father, please Jesus, and we shall be satisfied. And I can imagine Jesus' frustration. Hey Philip, haven't you been watching? Haven't you been listening? Haven't you seen me adding life to people's lives in my compassion, mercy, forgiveness, service, love? To have seen me is to have seen the Father, Philip. This is what God is like, Philip. And our psalm today anticipated that with its words of God being a God of mercy and justice and love. If we want to know what God is like, make sure the Jesus story is at the focus of our reflections. Jesus is saying that to Philip today. Now those qualities and characteristics and behaviours, love and mercy and service and compassion, aren't we, you and I, capable of those things? Compassion and mercy and forgiveness and service and love? And yeah, don't we, uh, don't we share in those in particular ways through mothers, even when she says to us, how many times have I told you not to do that? And she forgives us and we start again, yeah. So Jesus is saying, I am the way, is also talking about the ways that we are part of and sharing out the life of God already here and now to others. Not just in the eternal life of the kingdom of heaven, but we can do the things too, can't we, that Jesus says indicates the presence of God? Ah, oh, yeah. It was there in the second reading, I, I thought. You are blessed with the life of the Lord now. So live that way, was a message in that second reading. Here's another Mother's Day illusion. So often when a baby is born, people say things like, oh, she's got her mother's smile, or she's got her father's ears, or look at those strong hands, just like his father's. Jesus says that in this gospel. Look at me yeah, and you'll see the life of God here present. And in the, God, in the second reading, look at the way we shape our lives and you'll see our Christian faith shaping our lives in the way of Jesus. That gospel, many of us would have heard it at a funeral we may have been at. It's the gospel that's most chosen for funerals. There are many rooms in my father's house, says the Lord. So reassuring. Here's a, another take on the reassurance of death into eternal life by that poet Emily Dickinson. 
going to heaven. I don't know when. Pray, do not ask me how. Going to heaven. How dim it sounds. And yet it will be done as sure as flocks go home at night unto the shepherd's arm. If you should get there first, save just a little space for me, close to the two I lost. The smallest robe will fit me and just a bit of crown. For you know we do not mind our dress when we are going home. And as much as we are part of this life, our true home is in the kingdom of heaven. And one more, a comment for that first reading we had. The early church takes a practical decision to organise its structures in order that service of the needy is assured. And note in it, Peter doesn't take that decision on his own. The group takes the decision together after reflecting on the issue. The community chooses the people that it needs and present them to the leaders who commission them for their service. Sounds a good way for a church, for a parish to, uh, to behave, I think. In our own parish, aren't we so fortunate that so many of our parishioners participate in, in various ministries? So, uh, so many see the need to build up the life of Christ by living that life as part of our parish. What a rich gathering from the Word of God across these readings. Across them did you also hear that we're starting to move towards our focus on the life of the church. We're starting to extend our focus away from the resurrection of Jesus and taking that into the action of the Holy Spirit in the church and in individuals. It's three weeks until we celebrate Pentecost, but with that starting to open up in this week's readings, listen again to next week and the following week, and that will be preparing us to celebrate well the gift of the Holy Spirit at work amongst us when we gather in three weeks' time for Pentecost. We don't really move on from Easter, so let's again profess our faith at the heart of which is the life, death and resurrection of Jesus the Lord. And we do it again in the form of the baptism promises that we renewed at Easter time and across the season. And so I ask you, Do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by it? I do. Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died and was buried, who rose from the dead and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. We do believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? We do believe. Let us pray. God, God the all-powerful Father of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgiven all our sins. May he also keep us faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's continue to pray for ourselves, for one another, the church and the whole of God's creation throughout the world as we continue to gather in Easter faith. those who have been like a mother to us, that God will bless them abundantly and help us to be inspired by their love. 
for us, for all who are grieving on this weekend, missing deeply those who have loved them, especially their mothers, their wives, their grandmothers, and other special women in their lives, that God will fill their hearts with peace and that our prayers and care bring them support and comfort. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We often hear the words of today's gospel at funerals. We pray for those who are approaching death, caring for someone who is seriously ill, grieving the death of someone. May the reassurance of Jesus' words bring blessings of compassion and hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. As Jesus proclaimed himself to be the way, we pray for those who are uncertain and searching for the way their lives should take. We pray that the companionship and support of, our, of family, friends and the community of the church and God's Holy Spirit can be a strength, hope and support for them. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. With continuing reference to church as community in the world of God during Easter time, we pray that our parish in this time of change may the gifts of faith, hope and love with which we have been blessed continue to help us grow together as a true expression of your church. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. God of life, you promise to support us in weakness. Look with compassion upon the sorrowful conditions of your people at this time who are suffering because of this pandemic. Relieve the pain of the sick. Give strength to those who care for them. Welcome into your peace those who have died. Grant throughout this time of tribulation that we may all find support in your promise to be with us always. Grant to all people at this time courage in facing uncertainty, hope in managing anxiety, persistence in adhering to regulations, patience and situations of tension. Sustain with a sense of significance in their work and all who bring companionship, medical care and basic essentials to others. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died recently and for those whose anniversaries occur at this time. May they share fully in your resurrection, which we are celebrating this week. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Following last weekend's Good Shepherd Sunday and prayer for vocations, several people contacted me. They'd liked the words of the prayer we shared, but regretted that those words weren't on the screen last week. So let's pray that again. Uh, remembering prayer for vocations for the whole life of the church. Let's speak out these words together. Lord Jesus Christ, Good Shepherd, protect, we pray, the flock of God's people, comfort it and revive its spirit, lead it to fresh pastures and restful waters, call from our midst new pastors, bold in spirit, generous in heart, and clear in vision. Bless them with the gifts to become forthright messengers of hope, strong community leaders, and wise spiritual guides for your people. Show them the gifts you have given them, inspire them with the needs of the church, and make them brave enough to offer their service for leadership in the church. We trust that you will always give life to your church Keep us open for the movement of your spirit. Amen. We pray earnestly with the hope of Easter people, for we pray as always through Christ our risen Lord. Seek 
the bread, the wine, the people of faith and hope gathered for Eucharist again. Let us pray. Let's pray that this sacrifice of ours will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice, have made us partners in the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth in Jesus, we may make it ours by worthy ways of life. We ask this through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let's again give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and for our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. And in this time of Easter, above all, to praise you even more gloriously as we continue to celebrate that Christ our Saviour has been sacrificed and raised into new life. With the old order destroyed, a universe cast down could be renewed. Integrity of life could be restored to us in Christ. Overcome with that Easter hope and joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory and we join them as we acclaim... You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At that time when he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let's proclaim together the mystery of our faith. As we celebrate this memorial of Christ's life amongst us and his death and resurrection and sending of the Spirit, we offer you, Father, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. 
Bring us to the fullness of charity, of hope and of faith, we pray. We hold ourselves in that prayer, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Archbishop, Mark, our Regional Bishop, the clergy, all who gather in the name of Christ and all people of goodwill. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have died in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died. Hold them in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. In that prayer today, we hold our mothers who have gone ahead of us through death into the fulfilment of, fulfilment of life in your kingdom. In our prayer of thanks, we continue to commend them to the fulfilment of the gifts of eternal life. Have mercy on all of us as we continue along the way, we pray. And then, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, bless Joseph, her spouse, the apostles and all the saints who've pleased you throughout the ages, we too will be co-heirs to eternal life and will praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. 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 Again, let's join our voices in prayer as Jesus, who is the way, the truth and the life, has taught us to do. Let's say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but rather on the faith and hope of your people, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May that peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you. Let's offer to one another a sign of the Lord's peace. We want to live with always. God's peace be with you. Peace be with you, Justin. Peace be with you, Brian. Peace be with you, Alice. Peace be with you, Rachel. Peace be with you, Sandra. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people always, we pray, O Lord. And lead us, whom you have imbued with the heavenly mysteries of Easter, to pass from former ways to newness of life. We pray this through Christ, who is our risen Lord. Amen. And so we uh, enter into our, another week of the Easter season, as I said earlier, getting close now to those Feasts of Ascension and then Pentecost. During the past week, uh, several parishioners have contacted, one about that prayer uh, and a couple of others about our collections and how are we going and asking for clarification of that. So we continue to receive the donations from people who contribute by debit card and credit card. Thank you very much for that. And some people who are contributing by envelope are dropping those envelopes in the letterbox at Sacred Heart Church. It's secure, it's locked, and I check that a couple of times each day. Uh, some envelope contributors are keeping their envelopes uh, aside until we all gather. That'll be a big weekend, won't it, when that happens? And some were a bit confused about transferring to the parish pay portal. So stay on after Mass watching the screen, and there'll be instructions there of how to do that. It means firstly going to our parish website, but stay after Mass and have a look at that slide and it uh, should be really clear there, I think. Thank you so much, those contributions, so that amongst everything else, the care of our parish is uh, very important to our parishioners uh, still. Thank you very much, we thank one another for that. And now into another week. There may be announcements about uh, when things will change. There may be announcements about things changing the same. Uh, let's keep strong and hopeful. And certainly this weekend, families, have a great Mother's Day in these unusual circumstances, really appreciating the gift that we are to one another as we perhaps are able to share some small gifts with one another. The Lord be with you. Thank you. Almighty God, bless us all, especially mothers. May all the blessings of God that we need come upon us, stay with us, and show up amongst us the blessings of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's always be peaceful people, and in that we will be loving and serving the Lord. The Mass never ends. Mass never ends. It must be lived. So let's go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.